money makes the world go round. It also spawns some subpar music. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 biggest musical sellouts. For this list, we're looking at the biggest sellouts in the music industry, a term used when an artist foregoes their original sound and intentions in order to capitalize on a broader market. We're basing our picks on how far from their original sound an artist drifted and how much of an impact it made on the band and their popularity. Number 10, Aerosmith. Throughout the 1970s, Aerosmith was one of the biggest bands in the world. However, in the 1980s, internal conflicts plagued the band, and their popularity suffered as a result, making for some less than stellar years for the once great group. In order to regain their status as rock and roll kings, they collaborated with rap group Run DMC in a rather risky but also genius career move. Their following permanent vacation went on to go multi-platinum, restoring the band's cool factor until I Don't Wanna Miss a Thing once again earned the ire of fans in 1998. Number 9, Liz Fair. One of the most influential artists of the 1990s, alt rock queen Liz Fair could seemingly do no wrong by the turn of the millennium. That was until she was offered some extra cash to work with the masterminds behind pop stars Avril Lavigne and Hilary Duff. With the release of her 2003 self-titled pop rock album, the backlash towards the singer was endless, with one review from Pitchfork giving the album a 0 out of 10 and accusing Fair of being reduced to cheap publicity stunts. The hate train didn't quite die down thereafter either, as her next two releases received mixed reviews. Number 8, Nicki Minaj. Yes, I did, yes, I did. Somebody please tell him who the F I is. I am Nicki Minaj, I'm at them dudes up. Alright, alright, hear us out. Before Superbass established Nicki as a pop star sensation, she was spitting fire as an underground rapper, and a pretty talented one at that. You dead bitch, I'm the boss, I'm the buddy that's me all. Originally signed to indie label Dirty Money Entertainment, Minaj quickly made a name for herself through several critically acclaimed mixtapes before becoming noticed by Lil Wayne. Yay, I do what I does, I come through this bitch wrist blue and cuz. This was followed by her debut Pink Friday and being heavily featured on Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. One brief stint as a judge on American Idol and a few highly successful, although some might say generic mainstream pop songs later, and Nicki Minaj has longtime fans scratching their heads. Take a look what you start. Number seven, David Guetta. In the world flashing from your eyes, and you know that you've got it. Guetta is a DJ and remix artist from France known for a unique electro house sound that no one else can fully replicate. However, his third studio album, Pop Life, featured vocals from popular British singer Tara McDonald. Under the sun, I feel I'm getting stronger. That, plus his near constant collaborations with the likes of Akon, Nicki Minaj, and Snoop Dogg, means he hasn't quite been able to shake his ties to pop music. We're not saying that going pop inherently means you've sold out, but fans of EDM in general, and Geta in particular, say that as he's found his mainstream groove, his music has lost its soul. Geta said frequently that he's not trying to be credible, he's trying to be incredible. We'll just leave that there. Number 6, 
Number six, Taylor Swift. I bet she's beautiful. That girl he talks about. While T-Swift was always a popular artist, there's no denying that she's been getting more and more mainstream over the years. She started as a sweet and innocent country girl, singing cute tunes about boys and receiving acclaim and popularity for doing so. It wasn't until 2012's Red that listeners began noticing a distinct change in her sound. That is until 2014's 1989 burst into full-blown pop territory. While she was heralded as a brilliant songwriter for her age, many fans turned their backs on Swift when she adopted a more bubblegum pop aesthetic and started working with the likes of Max Martin, the producer and songwriter behind countless top 40 hits. Number 5, Maroon 5. Don't deny it, songs like Sunday Morning and This Love were your jam back in the early 2000s. They were fun, light songs, but with meaning and care put behind them. So we imagine you were excited to see what the band had in store for you next. You may have been disappointed by what Adam Levine and the boys dished up. some accusing them of focusing too much on the hunky and bankable looks of their frontman and not enough on actual musical artistry. Gone were the blue-eyed soul-inspired tunes of the group's debut, and in their place were admittedly catchy, yet undeniably poppy productions that just didn't live up to what fans had to expect from them. Number 4, Ice Cube. Ice Cube is a revolutionary figure in the music industry. He began his career at 17 with the infamous hip-hop group N.W.A., known for their scathing, politically charged lyrics about the abusive treatment of African Americans. He began a solo career in 1990, producing some of the most influential rap albums ever recorded. And it read Ice Cube's a pinch. Drunk as hell, but no throwing up Halfway home, and my page is still blowing up. However, since then, product endorsements, a clothing line, and a family-friendly movie career have raised some eyebrows among die-hard followers. While some accept the fact that the dude's got a hustle to bring home the bacon, others accuse Ice Cube of selling out with his drastic image change. Compare Straight Outta Compton to Are We There Yet to decide for yourself. It's coming! Number 3, Metallica. Metallica was easily one of the best and most popular heavy metal bands throughout the 1980s, creating masterpieces like Master of Puppets and And Justice For All, all played with rapid precision and power. Then, 1991 happened. Critics and hardcore fans alike criticized the band's eponymous album for its more radio-friendly direction, with softened guitars and lyrics. And else the band's image changed as well, but to the chagrin of avid listeners, these alterations were met with decent record sales and not abject failure. Ultimately, the final nail in the coffin was the Napster fiasco, when almost everyone, and not just the haters, finally accused the group of being a little too money hungry. He never Number 2, The Black Eyed Peas. Believe it or not, there was a time when the Black Eyed Peas weren't singing about humps and feelings and shutting up. The group was created in 1992 and released some pretty decent alternative hip-hop albums, but they couldn't quite find an audience. 2003's Ella Funk was the first album recorded with new band member Fergie, and the group found wild success with Where Is The Love. Just ain't the same, always change, new 
days are strange as the world is It was after that success that the band's sound shifted sharply to a more party-style vibe, a change that was likely a drastic and frustrating one for longtime fans of BEP's early underground work. Doing whatever I like, I'ma be popping that bubbly, cooling and living that good life. Before we sell out our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Green Day. My eyes feel like they're gonna bleed. You wouldn't expect a group with an album called Dookie to follow the green, but here we are. Green Day once had the world in the palm of their hands. The band helped revitalize punk rock throughout the 1990s and were known for their political lyrics and stereo blasting sound. However, as is the case with raw sounding bands that find mainstream success, Billy Joe and the band turned off longtime fans and drew charges of selling out by releasing albums that sounded even slightly produced. Don't wanna be an American idiot. The boys steered into the skid though, with the Broadway musical based on their rock opera American Idiot. Sure, it was successful, but diehards accused the band of catering to a decidedly unpunk audience and were alienated as a result. On the So, do you agree with our list? What band do you think is responsible for selling out? For more faithful top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.